a warm welcome to all the students continuing with our discussion on the classification of animal kingdom we are going to cover three phyla in this session mollusca echinodermata and hemipotita so let's start with the first phylum of this session mollusca the name of this phylum has been derived from a latin word mollus or molluscum which means soft the members of this phylum are soft body hence the name mollusca this phylum has about 80000 living and 35000 extinct species known to date which makes it the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom after the phylum arthropoda the study of mollusks and their shells which is a unique characteristic of this phylum is known as malacology or conchology now let's have a look at the body plan of the molluscans the body can be roughly differentiated into four parts head foot visceral mass and mantle head may or may not be clearly demarcated in the members it consists of sensory organs such as tentacles eyes statocysts etc the second part is foot which is a muscular organ and is used for locomotion third part is the visceral mass which contains various organs related to digestion reproduction and circulation and the last part is mantle which is a fold of the skin of the dorsal body wall it secretes the shell if it is present and contains gills or lungs meant for respiration this diagram shows a basic ancestor compiling the general characteristics of this phylum we can see that the body is covered with a shell on the outermost side and the fold of skin beneath the shell is the mantle there is a foot on the mantle side which is used for locomotion the alimentary canal has two openings the mouth and the anus with specialized parts such as stomach heart can be seen meant for circulation and gills for respiration now let's have a look at the general characteristics of this phylum the members of this phylum known as mollusks may be aquatic or terrestrial in habitat they generally exhibit bilateral symmetry except snails which are asymmetrical the body is unsegmented and enclosed within a fold of the skin which is known as mantle or pallium the mantle secretes one or two shells which may be external or internal they are triploblastic coelomate animals but the true coelome is reduced and limited to kidney and gonads the circulatory system is of open type except in cephalopods in open type circulatory system the blood leaves the network of the capillaries and enters the cavity between the tissues known as hemocoel from where the tissues exchange gases through diffusion the respiration takes place with the help of gills or pulmonary chambers The digestive system is well developed and consists of regula and hepatopancreas. Regula is a characteristic rasping organ which is unique to mollusks and found in every class of this phylum. It is a minutely toothed chitinous ribbon which is used for scraping or cutting food before it enters the esophagus. And hepatopancreas is an organ in digestive tract which is analogous to the liver and pancreas found in higher animals. The excretion takes place by means of organ of Vesalius or Cabers organ. The organ of Vesalius is a molluscan kidney. It is the organ of excretion named after the scientist Vesalius who discovered it or described it for the first time. And then we have the Cabers organ which is also known as pericardial gland. It is a large reddish brown glandular mass which is situated anterolateral to the pericardium into which it it discharges the waste material. The nervous system is well developed. The sensory organs are eyes, statocysts and osphidia. Eyes generally do not provide detailed vision. They rather act as directional light sensors. The statocysts, they are vesicles containing statolith, which is a stone-like structure made up of calcium carbonate. It is located near the pedal ganglia and acts as the balancing organ. Osphoridia is a chemosensory structure which is found in the mantle cavity and is used for testing the chemical nature of the water which enters it. The sexes can be separated or united. Development is either direct or indirect. In case of indirect development, it involves veliger and trochophore larvae. 
On the basis of shell and foot, the phylum mollusca has been further classified into the classes Aplacophora, Monoplacophora, Polyplacophora, Gastropoda, Scaphopoda, Parasypoda, and Cephalopoda. Let's start with the class Aplacophora. Plac means plate and pore means skin. So this class constitutes of those animals which do not carry or bear a plate. The head, mantle, foot, shell and nephridia are absent in the members of this class. The body is covered with a cuticle. The digestive tract is straight and consists of the characteristic rasping organ radula. A mid-dorsal longitudinal keel or crest is present. The example of this class is Ketoderma. The next class is the class Monoplacophora, that means one plate carrying animal. The shell of the members of this class is composed of a single valve or plate. Actually, the shell is made up of one or more articulating parts in the mollusk, and each part is known as a valve. Their head is without eyes and tentacles. Tentacles are also sensory organs. The example of this class is Neopelina galatea. It is a living fossil as connecting link between Annelida and Mollusca. Neopelina is the only living member of this class. It lived during the Cambrian period and it is considered a connecting link between Annelida and Mollusca because its body shows true segmentation or metamorphism, which is a characteristic feature of Annelida. The body is segmented and has repeated nephridial units. Also, the body is covered with a shell, which is a unique feature of phylum mollusca. Therefore, it is considered a connecting link between Annelida and mollusca. The next class is class Polyplacophora, that is many plate bearing. The shell, as the name indicates, is composed of a longitudinal series of eight shell plates. The foot is flat and ventral. In position, radula is well developed. The example of this class is chitin. 